friends, welcome to episode number 113 of the Addiction Unlimited podcast. I'm your coach, Angela Pugh, helping you get that sober life you want. And we are still going strong in our Double Down on Your Recovery series. If you are new here, that means I'm giving you double the episodes and double the support and double the strategies, and I want you to double your recovery efforts. Last week's bonus episode was the Recovery SOS, and I've gotten some great feedback on that one. If you haven't heard it, it's definitely worth taking a few minutes to check it out and get the cheat sheet because the SOS is not only super simple, but it's super helpful to keep yourself on track with recovery. And it's also a great tool to begin to see some of your own patterns and how you get in your own way. Today, we're going to talk about finding ways to have fun in sobriety. And I want you to start this episode with a clear and open mind, okay? I start with that because One thing you have to be aware of as you begin this new way of life is that fun isn't going to look like it used to. Fun to me used to be very drunk, running the streets of LA, bar to bar, party to party, friends and hangovers, and a lot of wasted time. (laughs) In sobriety, fun looks entirely different. When I was drinking, I could go anywhere, whether I liked it or not. I could have some drinks, your inhibitions drop, your defenses drop, your anxiety drops, and you lose control of yourself and judgment and actions. I have to deal with my social anxiety. I have to manage my discomfort. I have to push myself outside my comfort zone. And that's why I want to emphasize the importance importance of listening to this with an open mind. I also want to stress the importance of having a good idea of who you are. What I mean by that is you have to have some idea of what you enjoy to be able to go out and do things you enjoy. When I was drinking, I thought I was an extrovert but I was never an extrovert. I was just drunk. (laughs) And one of the mistakes I made in my recovery was that I tried to go out and do extrovert things and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't enjoying myself. An extrovert is someone who enjoys being around other people, going person to person, saying hello, having light conversation with a thousand people. An extrovert recharges from the energy of other people. An introvert is very different. I recharge alone. I love to be around people and laugh and have fun and talk, but I hit a point that I need to retreat and have quiet time to recharge. Introverts also don't prefer small talk. You know, small talk, those conversations that are totally surface, like talking about the weather and sports and jobs. As an introvert, I don't enjoy so much small talk. I want to get deep. I want to connect with people on a soul level. I can hear about the weather and sports on the news. When I'm with other humans, I want to connect and talk about things that matter. I read something a couple of years ago about introverts and the discomfort of crowds. And this was really interesting to me because it fits me perfectly. It said, when an introvert enters a room and there are too many people, meaning too many people to have deep connections with each person, then an introvert wants to leave. (laughs) This is exactly me because I don't want to sit around with 30 people and have small talk. I love a bit of small talk, like as an icebreaker when you first meet someone, but I'm the person, if you approach me at an event or sit next to me at a table, somehow we are going to end up in a life-changing conversation (laughs) because I'm incapable of small talk. 
all of this to say, (laughs) once I started to understand who I really am, then it was easier to start finding activities I actually enjoyed. And you guys know I was a bartender for many years, and I continued being a bartender for several years into my sobriety. I literally spent 20 years of my life in bars. If I wasn't working, I was there drinking. It was my whole lifestyle. And I have so many people that work with me as their coach. And one of the first things people say is drinking is so much a part of my job. Like every salesperson tells me this. I've had mortgage bankers say it, attorneys, like so many people want to tell me how much drinking is a part of their job. And as a bartender, it kind of makes me laugh because it really was part of my job. (laughs) But for the rest of you, your activities revolve around drinking because you made it that way, (laughs) because that's what you've created, okay? If you had some illness and you couldn't drink, you would still do your job and you wouldn't even feel weird about it. As an alcoholic, we make everything about drinking, including our jobs, if possible. The problem here is it makes you question your ability to connect with other people and your ability to close sales if you aren't a little drunk and they aren't a little drunk. When you get sober, you have to rely on your actual skills and your knowledge, right? When I quit drinking, I continued having a bar life. Because it was the only life I knew. I didn't yet realize that I was an introvert. I still wanted to go out with my friends and have fun and be included and connected. I had a really good friend of mine once, Joe. He said to me one time, he said, you're like a really pretty wallflower. (laughs) And I laughed so hard because he's exactly right. Like everyone else would be drinking and getting loud and going crazy And I would just sit back with my water and observe everyone. I'm a total observer. I study things and people and interactions. I mean, I'm an introvert, right? I didn't want to be in the crowd, partly because I have crowd anxiety. So I always like to be on the perimeter where I feel safe, usually with a wall or a corner behind me. And I like to connect on a deeper level. So going through a crowd saying hi to a thousand people does not interest me. But it took me a long time to understand that that wasn't who I am as a sober person. I'm not going to enjoy myself so much in bars because it's just not my vibe as a sober person. Drunk, it was fine because I didn't care. I didn't care so much about the people around me. I didn't care if I connected with people, or if I was around people that actually cared about me. This is how we create these lives that feel really empty and lonely because we surround ourselves with people that have the same habits and same style of having quote unquote fun, but we don't surround ourselves by people who are good friends, who have your back and genuinely care about you. And when I would meet guys in those situations, they would be under the impression that I was a girl who liked going out and being in the mix. And I would go on dates and they would always want to be out partying in the mix. And then I was left feeling underwhelmed and bored and disconnected. But if a guy meets me out in clubs with friends and knows I'm a bartender in another club, of course he's going to have the impression that I like to be in clubs. And this is how we create these relationships that don't work because we present ourselves as something we aren't. And we do this in so many ways. Like I used to always watch football with boyfriends, right? Go to the Super Bowl parties and all that stuff. And I love sports, but I really don't enjoy football. I just don't like it. But because I was so insecure and I wanted so badly for the guy to like me, I wanted to do whatever he liked doing. So I would do all this stuff I didn't like. The problem with that is it isn't sustainable. Once the newness of the relationship starts to wear off, all of a sudden, I didn't want to go to the football parties anymore because I don't enjoy them. And then my guy was like, well, I don't understand. You used to love doing this with me. (laughs) You know, see what I did? I created a picture of who I was so he would like me but it was a lie. 
it wasn't really who I was. And I did this in a million ways over all the years of dating. And I've recognized when guys have done the same thing with me. In the first few months, they love to go shopping and run errands. Because in the very beginning, you just want to hang out all the time and it doesn't matter what you're doing. But after that newness wears off, I would be feeling disappointed and let down because he would stop doing those things. And I felt like he liked me less all of a sudden because he didn't want to do that stuff with me. The truth is, I am a one on one quality time person. I like small, intimate groups of people, I like quiet surroundings. I am crazy smart, so I like good, deep conversations I can learn from. I love being around other super smart people. I like to learn and challenge myself and be challenged. Have you guys ever heard of the love languages? This is an awesome thing, the five love languages. It's a quick tool you can use to learn like a little more about yourself and and your partner and your friends, whoever, really. There are five love languages and it just tells you how you express love, but also how you receive love. And for me, my primary love language is quality time. And that means I don't care what we do or where we go. I only care that we're doing it together. Right? I don't care if we sit on a curb in a parking lot. As long as we're together, I'm having fun and I'm perfectly happy. And this was an important discovery for me because it gave me more insight into who I really am so I can continue building a life for myself that makes me happy. I remember one of my ex, his primary love language was physical touch. So I made sure I was affectionate with him, especially when we would be in a serious or uncomfortable conversation. Some people fight. I'm not a fighter. I'm a communicator. I'm sure that doesn't surprise you because my whole life revolves around communication. And I'm the same in a relationship. If we're discussing something hard or disagreeing about something, I made sure I I would always touch him, either holding his hand or have a hand on his arm or his back or whatever, because I wanted him to feel loved and respected. And that's how he feels that was through physical touch. His secondary was words of affirmation. So I tried to be intentional about giving him compliments and showing him that I admired him in his decisions and actions as a business person and a dad and all those things. And it's not surprising that I'm an introvert and my primary love language is quality time. (laughs) They kind of go together perfectly. But what I want you to do is get a clear understanding of who you really are without booze. That's the first step in finding fun in sobriety. Fun isn't about being drunk. Fun is about doing things that are fun and stimulating to you. And you are becoming a more evolved version of yourself in sobriety. You are changing. So it only makes sense that your fun is going to change also. I had to eventually learn how to transition out of bar life. I finally realized that I'm not going to meet the kind of people I want to meet in bars. I'm not going to meet boys I'm compatible with in bars for the most part. Not saying it's impossible, but it's not likely. I'm more apt to meet someone I'm compatible with at a book club than a bar, you know, and it took me a long time to figure that out about myself. When I spent some time really getting to know me, I began to understand the types of things I want to do to have fun and to create a life I really love. And it takes some work and energy. I tried out a lot of different things to see if I would enjoy them. And some I really didn't. But I was willing to challenge myself to try different things. I was willing to go outside my comfort zone to deal with my anxiety and try things I wouldn't have done before. What I would love for you to do after this episode is sit down with a pen and paper and write down everything you like. Write down what kind of vacations you like, what sports do you like, foods you like, places you like to go. Get clear on what makes you happy. 
you all have a baseline to start from, right? Like you know yourself and the basics. Like you certainly know things you don't like, right? When I got sober, the short list would have been, I like beach vacations because I love the ocean and I'm a scuba diver. I love basketball and baseball and hockey and I really love going to games, right? I love Mexican food and pizza and French fries. I love dessert and I love going shopping. I love going to AA. I like watching TV shows, like weekly TV shows with my friends. That's a really fun thing. And I love going to movies. Movies are one of my favorite things. One of the things I miss the most in all this coronavirus stuff is I can't escape to an afternoon movie by myself. It's one of my favorite things to do. But that would have been my list in my first year sober. And I know you can come up with at least that many things you know about yourself. But you have to know yourself and what you enjoy before you can figure out how to have fun as a sober person. I explored photography a little bit. I thought I would really love to take pictures and I thought I would be good at it. But really... It's too technical for me and I'm not passionate about it. If I didn't, if I did really love it, then the technical stuff would be fun to me, but it wasn't. And I just borrowed my friend's camera because I definitely wasn't going to spend money on something I didn't even know if I would enjoy. So I borrowed my friend's camera and I watched a few YouTube videos about beginner photography and how to take pictures and what to watch for. Then I would spend an hour just taking pictures of different things, mostly Henry (laughs) in different places. I would snap shots of him inside, then we'd go outside, then I'd put him in a dark room and just practicing the different things I learned from the videos I watched. And I did this a few times too. I also went on that website that I always tell you guys about, Meetup. I went to a couple of photography meetups So I didn't just do it one time and decide it wasn't for me, right? I put some energy into it. I tried it several times in different ways, and it turns out it isn't for me. It just doesn't really hold my attention. I don't wake up on Sunday mornings thinking, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get out and take some pictures today. It just wasn't my thing. I also tried cooking. I tried some of those meal delivery services where they deliver the box of food for you and the recipe and you cook it. And I really enjoy cooking. I do like to cook. I like to learn new things. I like to learn about flavors and spices and different foods. There are some drawbacks too. I do not like cleaning up the mess. And there are some challenges with being single and cooking, right? Like it's difficult to cook for one person. It gets expensive to buy all the ingredients. And then I usually end up throwing a lot of stuff out because I can't use it quickly enough and it goes bad. So there are some challenges in that. The new thing I started recently, and I think I talked about this on another episode briefly because I do really enjoy cooking, is I've started a a weekly ritual with myself. Every week I'm trying a new recipe. A lot because I'm focused on really feeding and nourishing my body well, and I want to know better food options for myself. So each week, I spend a few minutes with Google and find some recipes I'm interested in. I print them, and I schedule a day to cook. I put it on my calendar, I make a grocery list, and I try a new recipe. It's actually been really fun. I've just been doing that the last month or so, and I like it. I can always invite friends over for dinner to experiment with me if I want it to be a group thing, but it's been really fun to do just trying different recipes and stuff. I also like walking and hiking, so I find groups that do that, and I join those when I can. And this can be hard too because a lot of time these activities will be on Saturday morning, and I go to breakfast with my father every Saturday morning. And people don't do much on Sunday mornings because I think a lot of people go to church. But sometimes there are weeknight walks. And if it is important to me and I really want to do it, then I will find it, sign up, put it on my calendar, and I will show up for myself to make me happy. I love to exercise and I'm loving it more this year as I've really pushed myself to do harder workouts and I can feel myself getting in better shape. 
I don't run out of breath as fast as I used to. I don't get as sore from the same workouts as I used to. And listen, I want to talk about this exercise thing because in December, I made a decision to kick it up a notch with my workouts. I want to be healthier. I want to treat my body right instead of sitting back and letting it all go to shit like I've done for the last five years. I knew I was out of shape and I knew I wouldn't be able to do all the exercises like everyone else was doing them. So I made a deal with myself. I started doing really hard classes. And the deal I made with me was if I start a class, I finish it. Period. I don't quit early and leave because I'm out of breath and the committee starts telling me I should be embarrassed and leave. I don't leave. I stop. I take breaks when I need them. I slow down if I need to, but I finish. That's my deal with myself. If I start, I finish, period. And at first, I was only able to do about probably 60% of the exercises. I had to stop pretty regularly and just sit down for a minute, (laughs) get a drink of water or whatever, while everyone else was staying in it and jumping around and doing everything. But I didn't care what they were all doing. I only care what I'm doing and that I'm doing the best thing for me. And if I have to stop for a minute, then I'm stopping. But if I start a class, I'm going to finish it. And a lot of time too, I would have to do modified versions of whatever the instructor or trainer is doing. And that's still true today, right? Sometimes I can't jump around the way everybody else is. I can't do all the burpees and jumping jacks and jumping rope, but I will keep moving. I will keep my heart rate up. And I know that with every movement, my body's getting stronger and I'm building up to being able to do more. The key is if I start, I finish. I don't want you getting caught up in feeling like you have to do everything perfectly or do it as well as other people. Do it the best you can for you. That's all. And the more you do it, the better you get. That's my approach to exercise. Because I know my big picture vision is that I want to treat my body better. I want to nourish my brain so it functions at its best because I poisoned the poor thing for so many years. I want to reward my body with good food because it's never given up on me, even when I poisoned it with booze and bad food and sitting on the couch or laying in bed for hours on end watching television. That's all I did for years of my life. I want to do a better job for my body. And knowing that's my vision gives me the strength to push myself a little more and to do better and stay committed even when I want to give up. And guess what? That's fun to me. (laughs) Challenging myself is fun because that's who I am. I love to learn and do better and be better. Remember, At the core level of all of this is that you are changing. And if you are changing as a person, then it only makes sense your lifestyle will change and your fun will change. As we evolve, our surroundings have to evolve with us. I mean, think about like when you started middle school right? You're going from elementary school to middle school. You weren't stressing out about, oh my God, how am I ever going to have fun again now that I don't have recess and a jungle gym to play on, right? You may have had a little stress about friends and starting a new chapter of your life, but you did it. You grew up, your activities shift, your friend group shifts, your interests evolved as you grew up. You simply grow out of things, and now you are growing out of a drinking life. You're growing into something different and more rewarding, and you have to be willing to be open-minded and explore things to find what turns you on. You have to manage your expectations also, and know that most activities aren't going to give you a serotonin and dopamine rush 
like drugs and alcohol do. So you aren't going to get the same kind of euphoria and numbness that comes with drinking and drugs, right? I'm not swinging from the chandeliers and acting crazy at the gym like I did in the clubs because I'm a grown up now. <laughs> now I get to walk in somewhere with strength and confidence because I'm a badass. I don't need alcohol to manipulate my feelings or manipulate other people or manipulate fun. I can do it all by myself, substance free. And I like being a badass way more than I ever liked being a drunk. So I'm going to give you some ideas of things to explore. Think about what you are open to. There will be certain things that you aren't interested in just because it's not your thing. And I get that. At the same time, I want you to be very open-minded about trying new and different things. Do not say no to everything as I go down this list, okay? That's the old you. We're focusing on the new you. And the new you has courage and strength and wants to grow and expand as a human being. So let's do that now. Let's grow and evolve. Okay, you know I'm an introvert and I'm a bit of a sciencey nerd, okay? You say nerd, I like to call myself geek chic, okay? <laughs> I'm geek chic. One of my favorite things to do is go to the bookstore. The really interesting thing about this too is I don't actually read books anymore. I listen to books on Audible and I listen to a ton of books because I love to learn. I literally have been an avid reader since I was a very little kid. And I think I've had a book in my hand since I was probably four or five years old. My mom taught me to read very young and my little face was always buried in books my whole life. Until I went to college. <laughs> I didn't start college until I was 37. And it kind of ruined reading for me because you have to read so much in your textbooks, like hundreds of pages a week. And then I just didn't want to read regular books anymore. But I consume a ton of books through Audible and even on YouTube. Before I buy a book, I always check to see if it's available on YouTube first. But going to the bookstore is a really fun thing to do. They have coffee. They have a ridiculous amount of magazines. I can flip through books I'm interested in and see if I want to read them. It's nice, peaceful time just like I like. Honestly, I go through more magazines at the bookstore than books. I love cars, and the bookstore always has the best car magazines, so it's a great time to go sit down with a cup of coffee for an hour and go through the latest car magazines. And I do the same thing with real estate magazines and investing. I like day trading and stocks, so I can read about all that stuff. The point is, the options are endless. This is also a great date idea. Grab your person, head to the bookstore, get a coffee and a stack of magazines, and sit down and chill together. Share what you're reading with one another. You can get travel magazines and start planning your next vacay. It's truly endless. Like, there's a ton of stuff there. Here's another one. Go out to breakfast. I started this Saturday morning ritual with my father somewhere around 10 years ago. I'm not sure exactly how long it's been, but eight or 10 years, something like that. And I love it. It's also a great way to spend quality time with a few friends or one of your kids, like have a breakfast date. I also encourage this for people who are dating. Go to breakfast instead of dinner. It's a little more casual. It doesn't take as long. It's a nice way to see someone more relaxed in themselves than a formal dinner date. And this comes with knowing yourself like we talked about earlier. Now that I truly know myself and what I like and don't like, I'm a morning person now and I would much rather go on a breakfast date, especially if it's a first or second date because it's more casual and quick and my anxiety isn't as bad. Here's a simple one. This can be fun with family or friends or a date too. Um, watch the sunset or sunrise. 
If you live somewhere like me that lacks a beautiful landscape, <laughs> this isn't something you would typically think of. Now, when I'm in LA, this is a no-brainer because there are so many incredible places to enjoy a beautiful sunset or sunrise. But in KC, I would sit down with Google and Google it. When is the most beautiful sunset in KC? Google will tell me everything I need to know, and then I can plan it. Super fun totally free opportunity to hang out with people you love, have great conversation, get out of the house, easy peasy. How about dance lessons? Oh my gosh, you guys, this is on my 2020 intentions. I love dance and I want to do salsa lessons and get really good at it because I think this is something I can enjoy the rest of my life. I speak Spanish. As a scuba diver, I travel to a lot of Latin countries and I could go salsa dancing everywhere. I can do it in KC. I can do it in LA. I can do it wherever else I go. And I was all about the dance lessons when the coronavirus happened. <laughs> so there are no dance lessons. But I started this, you know, I probably talked about this on the podcast too. In December, when I sat down to do my 2020 intentions, I don't do resolutions, I do intentions. And dance lessons was at the top of the list. But you know what? As I'm saying this, I just thought about it. I can go on YouTube and start learning for now until we can do real dance lessons again. Then I'll be a little ahead of the game and I won't embarrass myself as much. <laughs> I'm going to write that down on my list right now. Find salsa lessons on YouTube. Here's another one I love. Go to a game. I love going to games. I don't want to go to a football game because all those drunk men at football games scare me. And I'm really little and I definitely don't want to be in drunk and rowdy crowds. No, thank you. You can keep that scenario all to yourself, my friends. <laughs> but I love baseball games. In KC, we even have smaller teams that are really fun to go watch and very inexpensive. But it's a super fun outing, low maintenance, inexpensive. You can eat fun food, see something different. We have minor league baseball here that has a really fun park. And of course, Kansas City has the Royals, which is honestly one of the most beautiful ballparks in America, and I've been to a lot of them. Ours is hands down the best. We also have a little hockey team. We have a soccer team, and there are all kinds of games to go see that are not expensive. Or how about some good old-fashioned service work? Find an opportunity to volunteer. When I talk about service work, it isn't always in a soup kitchen or homeless shelter or rehab. I find big events in my city that I want to attend and I volunteer. There are some really big galas and fundraisers that are really expensive that I love. And a lot of times my friends can't afford to go or they're just not that interested in those events, right? Like, there's a lot of stuff like my friends aren't going to pay $500 a plate to go to something they don't care about that much, you know? So in those kind of events, if I'm by myself, I'll go online and sign up to volunteer. That way I'm there. I'm at the event for free. I'm being of service. And I love to volunteer at the registration desk at events because I get to meet all the people as they're coming in. And if I'm totally honest, I get to check out all the guys. That's really what I'm doing. <laughs> but you can easily find some great events to volunteer your time. You're doing good service work and getting to attend something really cool you wouldn't normally attend. Google volunteer opportunities in wherever you live, and you'll find there are entire websites with events for volunteers to sign up. And get a friend to do it with you. Get out of your house and out of your comfort zone. If you have bad anxiety like me, then maybe volunteer with dogs or volunteer at the zoo. Animals are always easier for me. If you want to get outside, go hiking or walking, you've heard me talk about this a lot. It's one of my favorite ways to get a good workout and connect with people I love. And it's totally free. You can go for an hour or three hours or 20 minutes. It's totally up to you. But get off your little buns and be open to trying something different. Or what about camping? Go camping. This is not something I would do, 
But <laughs> my family and my little niece and nephew went camping a couple of weeks ago, and I went and hung out with them. They were only about an hour outside of town, so I went out there and I played with them and cooked and explored the campgrounds with them. Then when it got late, I took myself home back to the lap of luxury and the air conditioning <laughs> and my little dog. I am not sleeping outside on the ground, my friends. <laughs> and listen, being outside in the summer is not my favorite thing to do anyway. And honestly, it was pretty uncomfortable. It was incredibly hot. I was drenched in sweat. There were a lot of bugs, but I did it anyway because it was an awesome way for me to spend time with my niece and nephew and bond with them. It got me out of the house and connected with my family. Everything doesn't always have to be exactly the way you want it to. Everything doesn't always have to be perfect under my perfect circumstances for me to go. You have to be open-minded, right? Willing to do something and be outside your comfort zone. Me, I'd rather be at the opera, but my family is not going to go to the opera with me, okay? <laughs> my mom will, but the rest of them wouldn't. Certainly not my niece and nephew. So I have to be willing to get out of my comfort zone, to not be so selfish that I wouldn't even consider it, and I have to take one for the team sometimes. It doesn't have to be everything has to be under my perfect circumstances, right? But it didn't cost me any money. I had a blast. I created memories with the little ones and it was totally worth it. And hopefully they won't go camping again for a long time. <laughs> okay, what's another one? Find some cool and different like local attractions and go visit them. In KC, we have some really neat things like we have an apple cider mill. It's very cool, super simple. They make apple cider. You can watch the whole process through the glass. The kids love it. They also have a cool little store where you can buy the cider fresh. They have fresh donuts there and coffee and all kinds of cool and different little cooking things in the store. It's fun. It's an easy couple of hours, fun with young ones, and equally fun on a date. That would be fun too. So Google local attractions in your city. Google has all the answers. But Google it and find a few things you want to explore in the next six months and do it. Don't just write it down and forget it, but do it. Go to an outdoor concert or movie. There's a really beautiful area in KC called Crown Center. It's truly amazing. And they do a free Friday night movie in the summer. It's a huge blow-up movie screen. They always play old movies. And you take a blanket and snacks and you chill on your blanket. And the movie starts when the sun goes down. And actually, my first year of sobriety, me and a few of my friends used to do this. We'd go to one of our favorite restaurants and pick up food to go. Then we'd head down to Crown Center, lay out our blankets, and we would all just kick back and watch a movie and eat dinner. And it was amazing, super cool, and totally free. Or you can also find outdoor concerts or plays or musicals, whatever your vibe is. Another one of my favorite things to do is the petting zoo. You know I'm obsessed with animals, and we have this awesome petting zoo. It only costs a couple of bucks to go. It's small and awesome, and they have an area where you can go in and you can feed bottles to little baby goats while they climb all over you and try to eat your clothes. <laughs> I love those baby goats. Okay, how about some fun stuff if you have to stay in? Do the dinner thing like I was talking about. Print a recipe and cook by yourself or with your significant other or invite a friend or two over. Another thing that sounds pretty fun if you want to have a few friends over, experiment with mocktail recipes. Mocktails are fake cocktails for those of you that don't know. But invite a few friends over and tell them to each bring a non-alcoholic drink recipe they want to try. And you can play with mocktails. It's super fun and easy. And you can take some selfies and post your alcohol-free mixed drinks and share your recipes with the rest of us. Or make your favorite milkshakes or ice cream sundaes at home or have a movie night with the fam. Okay, this episode is getting long, so I'm going to tell you a few more things to check out and then I'm going to let you get on with your life. How about mini golf? I think mini golf is pretty fun, especially if you're with fun people. Go with fun people. That will make it even more fun. 
Or another thing I did for a while was Sunday night dessert and coffee. Get a few friends or your significant other, pick a nice restaurant and just do dessert and coffee. Or rent canoes or kayaks or paddle boats, go to the drive-in movie, go do an escape room or throw axes. That's gotten really popular recently. Or if you're more of an adrenaline junkie person, you can always go skydiving or zip lining. Go try a new workout you've never done before, but you're curious about. When I get in better shape and my endurance is a little stronger, I definitely want to explore some different workouts that I've never been able to do before. Like we talked about earlier, the key is to know yourself and what you like. Then you can find activities that fit you. But also think outside the box and try some things just to try them. If you sing, go do karaoke. If you play music, go to an open mic night or look for some people to play music with. Go to a comedy club or take a comedy class or an improv class. I've been considering taking an improv class. Well, before coronavirus. (laughs) So maybe that'll be later this year or next year. I love to travel and I usually travel alone. In the past, I've found travel groups, right? Sober travelers or sober cruises. This way, I have a bunch of sober people to connect with and I get to go to cool places. Okay, I've given you a lot to think about and I want you to really think about some of the things you want to do. Like I said earlier, sit down with a pen and paper and write down everything you like. Write down what kind of vacations you like, what sports you like, foods you like, places you like to go. Do you like to be inside or outside? Are you adventurous or are you more conservative? Get clear on what makes you happy. This way you have a baseline to start from. Also write down some things that have always been in the back of your mind that you would like to check out. Maybe you want to build something or try building something. Maybe you have some projects around the house you want to do. Since I've owned my sober living houses, I've learned that I like projects around the house. I've done some plumbing, replaced a garbage disposal, dishwasher, ice maker. I've done a lot of painting, put in a hardwood floor. I've lived in apartments my whole adult life, so I've never done any of that stuff, but I actually enjoy it. I like projects because I like having a process to follow <laughs> with a with a specific start and a specific end point. That makes me happy. I can see progress and I have a sense of accomplishment when I finish. So think about some different things that you've thought about over the years that you want to explore. Okay? A lot of good and different ideas in this episode. Don't be effing around. Get your pen and paper and start making that list today. And do not listen to the committee if it starts immediately telling you all the reasons you can't do anything. It's BS. The committee is being lazy and scared, and we don't have time for that anymore. I mentioned a ton of things that don't cost any money or are less than $5. If you want to be busy, you want to have things to do, then don't let the committee make excuses. Tell it to F off, then start looking at some things to try. If you're completely broke, then get creative. I've told you before, I've taught myself damn near everything alone for free with Google and YouTube. I taught myself how to build websites, how to do marketing, digital marketing, how to start a podcast, speak Spanish, yoga, meditation, law of attraction, trauma healing, self-esteem building, how to communicate better, coaching, Makeup, skincare, how to put together good outfits, public speaking, home decorating, (laughs) plumbing, cooking, smoothie recipes, literally anything I want to know, I can learn for free on Google and YouTube. I started my first business by myself for free with Google and YouTube. All I had to invest was myself, my time, and my energy, and I gave all of it I had. And taking that little tiny step, being willing to put in the time and do the work is what ultimately led me where I am today, free. Do not listen to the committee and its excuses. You are in charge now. You decide what to do and you tell the committee, this is what you're doing. And if you need pointers or you don't know how to get started with something, post it in the Facebook group and I'll give you some ideas. I'll put the link below to join the Facebook group if you haven't already. It's awesome and full of support and love. 
I hope you are having a fan fantastic day. Let's stay on this double down on your recovery journey. Next week is going to be the last week of double episodes. Share all this good value with your friends. If you love these episodes, definitely share them. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you on Friday.